Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> I even cracked myself up. Hello, world. Deborah here with Deborah Does Diamonds. Welcome back. Hope we have some new viewers today. Um, so, this episode or video is going to be all about disaster. I have ruined my Fuji picture. After all of that setup and tutorials and everything else, disaster. I'll fill you in in a minute. Okay, so I started working on the Fuji picture as far as completing it. I got about this far. This section right here, that corner was done, and disaster struck. I tried to um, iron out that middle crease that was so noticeable, and it was a mess. So we're going to talk about that today. I've ordered a new Mount Fuji painting, came in. It's um, bigger than this original one that I did. And we're going to go over the differences between them, because one is a poured glue, and the other is a double-sided adhesive tape. So we will go over all the differences. That actually worked out pretty well. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, let's get started. Where to begin? First of all, let's talk about the one that I finished and ruined. Um, you'll notice here the Tory Gate I, I took out and put back in as red. This in the original um, painting was to be um, one of these darker purples, kind of the dust colors. Um, I will have my technical crew put a picture in right here. That's the painting with the purple Tory Gate. And here it is with the red. I like the red. I think it's pretty. So even though I destroyed this canvas with heat from an iron, I'm still going to keep it. And I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. How's that? Okay. All right. So I was ironing this... Um, undrilled portion of the canvas and I must have gotten the um, tip of the iron over here. You can kind of see where the wrinkles come around. <laughs> so I must have just gone a little too far up into the picture and I ruined it. Can you see all the wrinkles right in here? Not good. When I flip it back over, look at this canvas. I have tried books. I have tried, like, you try straightening one side out, and there that goes, right? Then I try to straighten out this side, and it's even worse. <laughs> so, I'm going to keep this as my example of what not to do with the ironing iron if you try to iron out a canvas before you get started. Make sure you do it before you start drilling, people. All right, I don't want you to ruin a canvas. Don't learn from my learn from my mistakes. Okay, so that's the main thing about today. So I ended up ordering. I was so upset. I ordered the same picture, but from a different company. It ended up coming a little bit larger, and it also ended up being what we call double-sided adhesive glue or tape. People call it different things. So let me show you what this one looks like compared to the other one. Okay, so first of all, you notice the cover, right? This is opaque. You can't see through it. That's your giveaway that you're working with double-sided adhesive um, tape. Some people like it and some people don't. It just depends on what you prefer. Um, there are some issues that come with the double-sided like this one here. So basically what happens is they take, they have the picture on the canvas and then they take a double layer of glue and they place it down on the picture so that there's glue facing the photograph and the prototype and there's glue facing you to work on. So what that ends up doing is making it very squishy. So um, I don't, I want to do this so you can see it in the camera. Um, how, how do I do that? What angle? So if you look here, this is, you can move these around after you set them down and they're squishy. It's kind of, you can roll them around, but it's, you'll be able to tell um, 
right away whether you have a double adhesive or a poured glue. Poured glue um, isn't as squishy as this kind is, okay? The other thing that happens with the double-sided is the rivers. The rivers, little creases that you get in the glue. That happens when it's rolled up and this cover is so thick that it causes issues in the glue. You can see this is almost like a heavy wax paper from the butcher. It's almost from what here. That's I'd like. like to show this um, line that's coming down right next to my drills here. Do you see that? Let me hold it up to you. All right, folks. Hopefully you can see the, um, I don't know how to handle this. Right here in the next line over is what we call a river. There's a bubble in there with some air. Let me roll it around, see if you can see it. Okay, that's what you call a river. Okay, and what we do, you get those with these uh, double-sided. What we do with those, it's not a problem. I mean, it happens, it's not a problem. Just what we're gonna do is take an X-Acto knife, which I have right here in my little kit. All right, we're gonna take an X-Acto knife and we're going to put a slice down the middle of that line. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up the glue let the air escape. I like to put a couple hash marks across it like that. You can see I've done some here. I don't know if you can pick that up as well. But you're just going to just make a line, cross hatches. That way the air can escape and the glue can be pressed back down. So you just kind of, whoops. Oh, I got some sharp nails on today. Look at that, I put a hole right in my paper. That's crazy. Okay. So just rub it down, and that should flatten it out. Um, oh, that looks fantastic. Let me show you again, just real quick, how quickly that flattened out. Okay. There we go. Okay. So you'll just do that over the entire painting. Now, some of these that you'll see in here aren't really a problem. They're wavy lines, but there's no air or bubble un inside of them. So you don't have to worry about those. Your diamonds are going to stick perfectly to that. So, okay, I am just going to look here to see if I can see any more bubbles that I need to take care of. Rivers, where are you? Just kind of look at it from side to side. In the lights, you'll be able to pick it up pretty quickly. Oh, I think I have one right here. Yep, and that's a pretty, you can feel the ridge. Okay, so we're going to take our X-Acto knife and just run along the line here. Oh, helps if I turn the X-Acto knife the right direction. <laughs> and just run straight down. Make sure you don't cut all the way through your canvas. These canvases are pretty thick, so they can they can take a little bit of pressure, um, but you just want to slice open the glue. That's all you want to do. That's pretty that's pretty important. So, okay, a couple hash marks lightly. Oh, that might be one there. Okay, and we're going to. Rub on that a little bit, get the glue pressed back down, and it should be fine. Okay, and if it's not fine when you're done um, flattening out the glue, you know, double check it. You might have to do it a second time. A really good way to tell if you've flattened that river or air pocket or bubble, whatever you want to call it, is after you're done flattening it out, flattening it out with your X-Acto knife, put the top cover on, press down in that area there, and that will flatten the glue. The way you can tell if you've been successful is when you go back and touch the glue, no ridge. That is how you know 
your drills will go down fine there won't be a problem okay if you joined me for the um, last video you saw that I was diamond painting up in this corner here and you could see that the symbols were pretty clear um, the picture was clear you could tell what it was whether the drills were on it or not that's a poured glue canvas let me show you the difference this is my new one that is the double-sided adhesive and you can see how dark you can because it's a larger picture you can see a little bit of the mountain here you kind of get the idea of what the picture is about but it's not as clear if you look at these um, symbols here especially these darker ones Sometimes they start to blur together, and it's very difficult to um, know what symbol or color you need to use, right? So in that case, and on these uh, double-sided canvases, I do recommend a light pad. And that's what this is here. I'll show this to the camera. Okay. There we go. So this light pad is a little on the smaller side, but it works for me. You can, you don't have to have one the size of your canvas is what I'm saying. Just get one about this size. And um, this one is 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And um, let me show you now how this works. To power the um, light pad, I like to use a battery source. Um, like this one right here you just plug it in there it just lasts longer that way you can turn it off and on as you go it's nice um, we go ahead and plug it into the light pad there we go and hit the on button there we go very bright and then what we do so that you can see the symbols on your double-sided adhesive look at that look at how that lights that up so here we go here are the symbols with the light pad on I don't know if I can lift that up for you can you see the symbols let me try to get that close so you can see them so anyway that is the light pad I think you guys will like this. I will put a link in the description for this particular one. I think it was an A14 or A4. I don't remember. Um, but I'll put a description in the link. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description is what I meant to say. <laughs> I will put a link in the description for this particular one if you'd like to um, purchase that from Amazon. Um, I wanted to show you the two sets of codes. On this smaller um, painting, there were only 18 colors, which I thought would be okay for this size. It's, it ended up being 25 by 35. On the larger painting, I have 34 colors on this one here. So a lot more detail. It's larger. It has more colors, so it's going to come out um, less pixelated than this one. This one up close can look a little pixelated, but again, at a distance, I'll show the main camera. At a distance, um, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? I really am sad that I messed it up. But that's okay. I'm going to keep it. I'm actually going to frame it because I love it that much. And, um, and then this one, you can already see I've done this top section here. And you can already see the difference between the two in the amount of detail. Look at these when I hold them up. Okay. Do you see the difference in the detail here in this corner versus this corner? Yep. A lot more detail. It looks more realistic. Okay. I guess I could have done it this way. Let me turn my light pad off. So let me show you also the difference in detail. So you can see the upper branches here on the smaller painting versus these same branches on the larger painting. Much more detail. It's, it's looking more realistic than the smaller one. So 
Okay, so that is your double sided. And by the way, today's colors for the jewels is red. I love red. And we're discussing rubies. So that is the gem of the week. So there we go. Let me show you these up close here. So today we learned about the disaster of ironing a painting. Once you've already put some beads down, some diamonds, do not do that, people. Just remember, because you don't want your prized possession diamond painting to look like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> and if you're going to iron a painting before you get started, make sure nothing is uh, drill, no drills are down on your canvas. Okay? Put some parchment paper over it. Upside down, iron at high heat, be gentle with the iron, <laughs> and then you'll be ready to go. And hopefully yours will stay nice and flat and look gorgeous. All right, thanks for joining us. So we'll see you next time. But in the meantime, be good to one another. Bye-bye. If you like the, nope, I'm supposed to say subscribe. I'm going to do this really fast like I've seen other YouTubers do it. I'm going to give that a go. Okay. <laughs> subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and hit the bell. And we'll see you on the next one. So don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to hit the bell notification if you'd like to know when our next video is on its way. Thank you. Ah, said it again. I want to see how that turns out. <laughs> I love this painting. Even though it's ruined, I'm going to keep it forever. So pretty. I don't have to keep straightening it out because it's not going to straighten out. It's ruined. But I keep doing this, hoping it will magically lay down and behave. <laughs> Hello, world. Disaster. Why do you always do that? You make me giggle. Um, I've come... Mm, 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 mm. I need to be more like a live I need to in my head to be more like a live stream okay so mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I always want to say okay so, <laughs> I can't do it I'm, you're just going to have to cut it out <laughs> stop talking <laughs> is it still going well, you should put that part in. So, happy fall to you. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that um, you can become a member. Nope, that's not right. Mm -mm. Do you remember what it was? So, in the meantime... Nope. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm always like... Mm. <laughs> it's like mm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and it was going so good. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't know what to say. <laughs>